Clarkson was born in 1801 and died in 1896, having lived through practically the entire 19th century. At the age of 84, he decided to write his memories of Mary Wakefield. So many changes have taken place in the town since I saw the light of day that I hardly know where to begin in my description of them. I was born in a house on Westgate Bridge. My father was largely engaged in the wool trade. The shops and streets in Wakefield had a good deal changed. Market Street did not exist and Wood Street was just being formed. I remember the courthouse being built very well. Its completion was considerably delayed by the difficulty in obtaining the large blocks of stone for the pillars. The land belonged to a clergyman called Wood. From the time I can recollect, up to about 1827, the only communication between the bottom of Kirgit and the bottom of Westcott, except going through the town, was by a footpath which followed nearly the line of the present Ings Road. The mills and warehouses were not there, but there was a pleasant footpath leading over the beck at Lady Bridge to Thorns and Law Hill. Law Hill was then a contested place on public holidays when it was a regular battlefield with lads from Thorns and from Wakefield pelting each other with stones. I remember my father telling me that when a boy he used to go and stand on Kirgit Bridge to watch the salmon leap the weir to get into the upper pool of the river which was then a fine fishing stream and he remembered the bridge being of sufficient width to allow one carriage passing over. During his lifetime, it was twice widened. These additions were made on the side opposite the old chapel, where you will see that the arches are round, whereas on the heath side, the arches are pointed. Of my school days, I was placed in the private school of the Reverend Benjamin Rayson, which was held in the Salem Chapel Yard in George Street. At that time, Mr. Rayson was a widower, but we began to hear whispers of a rich widow, a Mrs. Fenton, who lived at Egremont House in Northcote. One fine morning in 1815, Mr. Rayson came in dressed in his best, exclaiming... Well then, boys. Sharp's done the trick. Give you all a holiday. Away with you. Away with you. Mr. Sharp, who had done the trick, was the then vicar of Wakefield, who lived at the vicarage on the north side of the Springs, which led into the parish churchyard and at the end of a row of houses lived an old fortune teller called Fanny Rapp, who used to wear a man's cloth coat with the tails cut off over her more feminine attire. With regard to the parish church, I remember a singular advertisement about a man who announced he would fly from the church battlements to the Bowling Green in Southgate. Fastened to boards and ropes, and with arms flaying, he landed safely to the delight of the crowds. The parish clerk was an important person. The earliest one I can remember was old Peter Priestley, who lived in a house on the north side of the church. On Sunday he gave out the hymns and led the responses. He was also a gravestone cutter, which he was allowed to carry out on the ground floor of the tower. One winter's evening, he was working by the light of a candle when he heard a short, spiteful noise. He froze, then sang lustily. Again the noise came with increased power. His courage failed and he fled. Why, Peter, that looks as though that's seen a ghost. Nay, yeah, lass. I haven't seen one, but I've heard one. They've been working too near to that candle again. They'll set the wig on fire. Huh? 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 Hey, hell, lass. 
I don't suppose many inhabitants of our town know that Wakefield races were once held on what was called the Wakefield Outwood, and the grandstand could once be seen on high ground near the spot where the Northern Railway crosses the Bradford Road. After the act of enclosure, the races were removed to Pontefract, I think. In the year succeeding 1835, I took an active part in railway surveys, that being my profession. The coming of the railways made many changes in Wakefield. The Milnes family house, the most imposing residence in town, has sadly had to give way to modern pressure, and the site is now occupied by the railway and a street called Piccadilly. Pemberton House, built for Pemberton Milnes, was not claimed by the railway until much later, whilst I myself was living there. When eventually it was taken over, I went to live in Olverthorpe Hall, where I am now writing my memories. The whole of the ground where Kirgit Station now stands was cultivated as strawberry gardens, and it was one of our greatest pleasures on a Saturday afternoon to go there and enjoy delicious strawberries and cream. I also remember a character who soon after the opening of the line was made principal porter and became well known for his warnings to keep clear of the train. A caution he neglected himself, for sad to say, he was knocked down by a train and killed. The Wakefield Theatre in my young days used to be a far more important social event than it has ever been since. I remember an amusing incident when the celebrated singer Inkleden was reaching the climax of his song when one David Dixon, a sort of cow doctor, roared out Give it time, Inkledon! Give it time! A saying which is used in the West Riding to this day. The theatre at that time was owned by a Mrs. Banks, who lived in the house in Drury Lane, the garden of which extended nearly as far as Westgate Chapel and the Orangery in Back Lane, although Drury Lane itself did not then exist. When Mrs. Banks died, the theatre was sold, and gradually sank lower and lower until it reached a miserable state, from which it has, however, emerged and is once more a credit to the town. This way to the musical. Yeah. Public buildings are wonderfully improved since my early days. Our beautiful new town hall is a noble example, and much improved on the old one. But I am carried back to the time, not so very long ago, when the whole of the town's business was transacted in the chamber above the Market Cross, which was later taken down. A grievous pity, as it was a characteristic memorial to the last century. For the new Clayton Hospital, a delightful, airy situation has been chosen, and by this time, Wood Street has joined with St John's. Mary Wakefield has had her share of both sunshine and shadow, and many things still occur to me that I have not yet mentioned. But a very warm feeling for my native place fills my mind, and I trust that brighter days, even than any she has ever seen, may dawn and continue over her.